Hello, I'm Rafi Alunan. Makikita ninyo ngayon sa pang-anim na kabanata kung paano natuklasan at napigil ang planong pagpatay kay Santo Papa John Paul II noong January 1995. At mga detalye tungkol sa Oplan Bujinka na naging basehan sa pag-atake ng World Trade Center noong September 11, 2001. At kung anong ginawa ng administrasyon ni Pangulong Fidel V. Ramos para palakasin ang relasyon sa mga kaalyadong bansa ng Pilipinas kontra sa terorismo. I spent at least half of my time as chair of the National Committee on Anti-Hijacking and Terrorism in Mindanao and elsewhere to help ensure public safety and state security. Global terror rose in the early 1990s after Russia's defeat in Afghanistan in 1989. America's CIA and Pakistan's ISI collaborated in training and arming Muslim Mujahideen to defeat the Russians. Among them was Osama bin Laden, founder of Al-Qaeda. MNLF and MILF fighters volunteered to fight in Afghanistan. After Russia's defeat, some Mujahideen returned home to form the Al-Harakat Al-Islamiya, better known as the Abu Sayyaf. In the war against terror, uh, intelligence is the most important ingredient to detect their plans early, determine who they are, and then interdict before they can carry out their plan. When they are unable to prevent it, then we call on other forces to suppress uh, the threat. Like all operations of SAF, these are all sub rosa. These are, these are not really publicized. There were many national security concerns. The NPA, MNLF, MILF, Abu Sayyaf, and Lost Command groups that got in the way of peace and development in Mindanao. Negotiating peace was essential to defuse those threats. The 1976 Tripoli Agreement, the creation of ARM in 1989, the settlement with the MNLF in 1996, and the ongoing talks with the MILF are all part of the long and winding road towards lasting peace. The Abu Sayyaf, led by Afghan veteran Abdurrajak Janjalani, became the face of jihad and terror in the Philippines. Notorious for their attacks on Christian churches, raids, bombings, mass murder, rape, gruesome beheadings, and kidnapping. Among those kidnapped was Charles Walton, an American missionary who was taken in Sulu in 1993. Close cooperation amongst the DILG, the Libyan Embassy, other intermediaries known to Janjalani, and SAF resulted in Walton's liberation. In due time, the Abu Sayyaf's direct links to Al-Qaeda became known. January 6, 1995, a fire broke out in Suite 603 of the Doña Josefa Apartments. Responding firemen and a police team discovered a bomb-making factory and other incriminating evidence that pointed to a massive terror plot in the works. Alerted about the incident, Avelino Razon and Napoleon Taas, both ex-SAF and later assigned to the Presidential Security Group, rushed to the scene to investigate. The first thing that caught my attention was the computer. I secured it, placed it in my bag, and I carried it. And we continued on with the investigation where we were able to find uh, pictures of the bow, the uh, sotana, the priests, and explosive uh, materials, IED, improvised explosive uh, materials like uh, pipe bombs. When we reported this to the U.S. Embassy, they sent over a team from New York. They were the ones who identified through the photos and data in the laptop that the guy that escaped was Ramsey Youssef, bomber of uh, the World Trade Center in 1993. The discovery uncovered Al-Qaeda's Bojinka plot to blow up 11 U.S. airliners, potentially killing some 4,000 passengers en route to the United States. The bombing of PAL Flight 434 in December 1994 was a dry run. From our end, however, what is more revealing are the uh, pieces of documents 
the attache case of uh, Ramsey Yosef, receipt for the computer, his address book, telephone directory, bomb making manuals. That's where we got uh, most of the information. It was the first time that Saf learned about Sheikh Mohammed, Ramzi Youssef, and his team of terrorists. One of them, Abdul Hakim Murad, was to crash a 12th plane into the CIA in Langley, Virginia. That was the only time that it dawned on us that uh, Al-Qaeda was already here in the Philippines. And they even conducted training for the Abu Sayyaf in Basilan. And after that training, Ramsey Youssef went to Cebu. And after some time in Cebu, went to Manila and started planning for the assassination of the Pope. There was so much information that I mean, it was probably going to take years to really fine tune and develop what all uh, came from that. This was really the first, I would say, significant major terrorist incident, uh, you might say, in the world where such a, a, a plot was discovered. The evidence in Suite 603 also revealed a complex web of assassination plots that Youssef and his team would execute within months of each other. Assassinate U.S. President Bill Clinton during his state visit in November 1994. Assassinate Philippine President Fidel V. Ramos at an opportune time. And assassinate John Paul II in January 1995 on World Youth Day. The Abu Sayyaf was believed to have provided Yusuf and his team with security and logistical support. In turn, they would take the credit if the plot succeeded. Months later, Ramzi Yusuf and his accomplices were captured and turned over to the American Federal Bureau of Investigation and brought to justice. One of the things that came out of this too was that all of the information and evidence which the Philippine government discovered, in other words, uh, Ramzi Yosef's computer, uh, many of the different things dealing with the plot to uh, uh, kill President Ramos, and all these things was admitted as evidence, as evidence in the courts in New York and were helpful uh, in a large part uh, for conviction of, of those three individuals uh, for life sentences uh, in, in jail. The foiling of Al-Qaeda's plots was a major breakthrough in global counterterrorism that opened the doors of international cooperation. The Yusuf case prompted FVR to call for a counterterrorism summit. Nineteen countries attended the summit. General Edgardo Aglipay was staff commander then and helped me to organize it. I personally handed FVR's letter of invitation to key heads of state, including Pakistan, Egypt, and Israel. That summit was held in absolute secrecy in Baguio in February 1996, and that would be the first in Asia. The Walton kidnapping, the capture of Ramzi Youssef, and the counterterrorism summit were all connected to the effort of combating Al-Qaeda and global terrorism. U.S. President Clinton sent a letter of gratitude to President Ramos for his government's efforts in combating terror. Some of the credit was given to SAF kind of the unsung heroes behind the scenes in so many things, the work that they do on a daily basis is often not recognized as how important the Philippine police, uh, NBI, and the intelligence community are uh, when it comes to uh, stopping plots like this. Thank you for watching part 6 of Tagaligtas. Kung nagustuhan ninyo ang video na inyong nakita, sana ishare ninyo sa inyong mga social media communities. The next segment will depict how SAF prevented a major jailbreak in Metro Manila of maximum security inmates to include more than a hundred Abu Sayyaf jihadists. I'm Rafi Alunan. May the force be with you.